Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is trade rivalry. In the last two lectures, we've seen how trade is essentially awesome because it allows states to create what we call a surplus. In other words, if states were just producing goods and consuming goods on their own, they would be producing and consuming less than they are able to produce and consume when they are allowed to specialize in what they're better at making and then trade with the other guy to get what they're not so good at making. And so this creation of the surplus seems like it's really good and it's creating essentially something out of nothing and that states should be really happy with this trade and want to trade as much as possible. And yet what we're going to see in this lecture is that trade can actually create a source of conflict. And it's not because of the reasons that we saw in the second unit when we were talking about the prisoner's dilemma and cooperation. There we had an example where a government might want to tariff or tax imported goods in order to protect domestic production. That's not what's going on here. In contrast, what's going on here is that the very fact that a surplus can be created causes a bargaining problem over that surplus. And in other words, we can address this in a different way. We can ask the question, are the gains from trade equal? And if that's not the case, then there's a reason that we might actually want to bicker over how exactly that we're going to be trading. And to see how this works, we're going to look at a production chart. This is going to be the same from what we saw in the video on absolute advantage. So California and Mexico can produce two goods, either wine or tequila. For California, a day's worth of labor can produce 10 bottles of wine. For Mexico, they can produce two bottles of wine. And the other side, if California were to spend a full day's worth of labor, they can produce four bottles of tequila, whereas Mexico can produce eight bottles of tequila. Now the states have the following desired consumption. California must consume at least five bottles of wine and at least two bottles of tequila, whereas Mexico must consume at least one bottle of wine and four bottles of tequila. Now you'll note that based off of what I've set up here for the desired consumption and what they're capable of producing on their own, they can do this all by themselves. So if there's no trade, then the states would consume and produce in the following manner, where California produces five bottles of wine and two bottles of tequila for itself and consumes those because it's not allowed to trade. And Mexico would produce one bottle of wine and four bottles of tequila. And again, it would consume all of those. It's not allowed to trade with California. On the other hand, if we do allow the states to trade, then the states can make what they're specialized at. So they're really good at California at making wine, so California is going to make 10 bottles of wine, and Mexico is going to make 8 bottles of tequila. And then we're going to have them trade with one another. Well, we know that California, in order to be willing to trade, needs to get its 5 bottles of wine and 2 bottles of tequila in order to be happy, because that's what it would do on its own if it didn't have trade. And likewise, in order for Mexico to be happy, Mexico must get one bottle of wine and four bottles of tequila. And so the remainder of what was produced before these bare minimum uh, necessities that each state needs to get in order to be happy and be willing to trade is what we call a surplus. And so that's the four bottles of wine and the two bottles of tequila that we see up here. So what happened is these five bottles here, one of them went to Mexico and four of them went to the surplus, right? So California's down to five, Mexico's down to one, and over here, where Mexico started out with eight bottles of tequila, we shipped two of them to California, and then we left two of them up here in the surplus. And the states can actually bicker over how we're going to divide the surplus between these two guys. So California's ideal world would be to take the entire surplus for itself, right? California would be able to enjoy two extra bottles of tequila and four extra bottles of wine, and so... In California's ideal world, California would consume nine bottles of wine and four bottles of tequila, and Mexico would be stuck with essentially what it would get if it were just on its own. Now, it could be the opposite, right? So now, instead of California getting the entire surplus, it could be Mexico gets the entire surplus, and California is down to five bottles of wine and two bottles of tequila, like it would be in a world without trade, and Mexico is really well off now, because Mexico is now getting the entire surplus of wine, that's four extra bottles of wine, and additional, an additional two bottles of tequila, and it's getting six bottles of tequila total. So this is Mexico's ideal world. There could be an equitable distribution as well, where the sides split the four bottles of wine surplus and the two bottles of tequila in surplus, and that would result in California getting seven bottles of wine, three bottles of tequila, and Mexico getting three bottles of wine and five bottles of tequila. There could be an equitable but slightly favorable distribution to California, where now California is getting one extra bottle of wine and taking one away from Mexico, or it could be the other way around, where Mexico gets a somewhat equitable 
solution here, but Mexico is getting a little bit more and California is getting a little bit less. So Mexico is taking that extra bottle of wine and California is getting one fewer. So again, we call this value up here, these extra bottles of both wine and tequila, the surplus that's created from trade. And this surplus is something that can be bargained over. And we're not exactly sure how it's going to be resolved. And we call this a bargaining problem. This is really, really common to any sort of situation like this. States want to trade to realize the benefits of production specialization. And so that's where California is producing the wine and Mexico is producing the tequila. But states want to compete over that surplus, the four extra bottles of wine and the two extra bottles of tequila. California wants to take all of that surplus. Mexico wants to take all of that surplus. And what's critical here is that despite the fact that there's this desire to steal all of the surplus, there's still this mixed motive where you do want to cooperate with the other guy because if you fail to resolve this bargaining tension, decide how to split the surplus, then you end up without trade at all. And that means that the states receive none of the surplus. And so that's bad for both parties. And so the lingering question and the tension here is how do you resolve this sort of rivalry when you're in competition over the surplus. Now, sometimes you're able to do that on your own. Other times you get into conflict over it, but you don't want to be in conflict over it. You want to be able to resolve this so you can enjoy mutually that surplus from trade. And so in the next video, we will talk about what happens when states are unable to resolve these sorts of conflicts on their own and why they might actually seek help at an international court to resolve these sorts of trade disagreements. So that wraps up this video. And in the next video, we'll start talking about international courts. Join me then. Take care.